Your critics will try and tell you how to live your life. You should never live your life according to the expectations of other people. Not even your husband or your wife. And that's the bottom line because H.F. Edwards said so. You've got to be true to your own self. You've got to be real to your own self. You roll up your sleeves. You look at the vision. You say to yourself, I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'll get the job done. Don't shortchange yourself. Don't settle for mediocrity and every shot. Don't become dependent on the accolades of people. Ah, oh, you know you're so wonderful. Ah, oh, you know you're so pretty. Ah, oh, you know you're so gorgeous. Ah, oh, you did well. As soon as you feed off of the accolades of men, the applauses of men, the day they want to punish you, they keep quiet. They don't say you're pretty anymore. They don't say you're gifted anymore. They don't say you're vivacious anymore. They don't say how able you are anymore. Why? Because they want to punish you. They want you to change your mind. They want you to change the direction and the cause of your life and in order to propel and push you they make sure that they take away from you that which you've become dependent on if people clap hands so be it if they don't clap hands so be it if I had to go according to the voices of my critics I would not have stood here today. There are people that does not know me that don't like me. They've never engaged me. They've never seen me. They've never talked to me. They, Freddie Edward, oh my God. Why? Because of my critics. I was in a meeting on the 27th at the school and there I saw such stupidity and such foolishness. People were fighting someone else's battle. People got themselves in a situation where their fight was not directed against the principles. Their fights were directed against a person. Everybody ignored the principle and focused on me, say, yeah, you love money. That's why you want the school to run as a business. The school is a business. I have to pay salaries. I have to pay rates and tax. I have to pay water and lights. I have to pay all of the staff that is there. We got to look at upgrading the facility. We, all of that takes what? Money. How dare you say to me in one instance, well, you know, if it's a business and you've got a general manager, you can fire him. But if it's a school, it's not a business. I, 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 how, how does people begin to think like that? But then it became abundantly clear that the fight was not directed towards principles. The fight was directed towards me. And they are of the opinion, not knowing that we've put hundreds of thousands of friends into that institution. A small group of opinion were of the opinion that I am enriching myself with the school. That's critics. And you know what you do? You remove yourself, you move to the next level, and you don't pay attention to your critics. Never make your critics so important that you give them time. Listen to them. Well, well yeah. food. 
I didn't say that. It's you people. You people are very naughty. They'll criticize, they'll push you, they'll tell you everything that they want to, but make sure you don't pay them attention. Let me try and break this thing up quickly. Here's a man by the name of Nehemiah. Nehemiah is a visionary leader. Read the book. Nehemiah is a Jew called by God. A gifted individual that finds himself in a very difficult and unpleasant situation. One, he's in a foreign country. Serve a foreign king. Two, Jerusalem, the place of his birth, is lying in ruins. The walls of Jerusalem has been burned down. There's economic disaster as people became insolvent one after the other. And as the rich began to exploit the situation, there is no hope, there is no singing, there is no dancing, there is no children's church. Everybody is depressed. Everybody is sitting and considering their own survival. Jeremiah, who is a cupbearer, comes before the king, perplexed and troubled by the condition, the socio-economic conditions that's prevailing in Jerusalem. And the Bible says when the king looks at him, the king asks him, why do you look so sad? He says to the king, my heart is sad because I come from Jerusalem. And I've received word that Jerusalem, the city of God, is lying in ruins and her walls has been destroyed. There is no worship. There is no sacrifices that's going up. Everybody's living for themselves. The rich is exploiting the poor. The poor has got no defense whatsoever. The worship of God seems to exist. If it pleases the king, will you please let me go to Jerusalem in order to go and rebuild the walls? The king asks him, how many days do you need? And he tells the king, well, I think the project is going to take so many days. He says to the king, if it please the king, will you please give me letters of support and endorsement? And the king gives him letters of support and endorsement. You see, child of God, you need to understand that it only takes one person to make a difference. You don't need to be bogged down. You don't need to subscribe to the notion that majority rule. One man with God, one woman with God is still a majority. You can still make a difference. You can still make a meaningful contribution towards the affairs of the agenda of the kingdom of God. If everybody in your family failed, you don't need to fail. If everybody in your family is down low at the bottom, you don't need to be down and out You don't need to be at the bottom You can lift yourself up Why? Because God is able to do Far above Exceeding abundantly Beyond all that you can ask or Think according to the power That works on the inside of you You've got power You've got gifts You've got ability There is more for you Than what there is against you all you need to do is don't pay attention to your critics. All you need to do, don't pay attention to your cynics. But like this man near Meyer, you've got to look at the vision and push yourself. As Jeremiah, as Nehemiah rather walks into Jerusalem, I don't have time for the story. 
he goes and he does a, a, an assessment an evaluation of some sort he goes through the entire region and he makes notes read the book it's a very interesting book on strategic leadership visionary leadership the ability to plan the ability to mobilize the ability to get people to move from a place of laziness to a place of work the ability to facilitate process that leads to justice and equality the ability to make sure that those that were exploited are brought into right standing and that justice prevail read the book of Jeremiah and Nehemiah here Jeremiah, Nehemiah comes and he begins after he's done his assessment he begins to mobilize the people of God now at this point the people are all sitting in depression everybody has lost something this one has lost his house this one has lost his car this one has lost his business why because they are now oppressed by this empire and these regions that have come against them in order to destroy them and their brothers that signed covenants with their oppressors I don't have time in this lecture but Jeremiah the Bible says he immediately begins to get the teams together he begins to mobilize the workforce the people were sitting in depression the people were sitting and they lost hope they were no longer going to church they no longer were worshiping they were no longer actively participating in the affairs and in the economy of the day Nehemiah comes into that situation and he begins to mobilize the masses he says there's no use in you sitting here and feeling sorry for yourself it's not going to change your situation all those of you that have invited that have arranged a pity party and have invited yourself your pity party is not going to change your situation. Stop feeling sorry for, oh, oh me, oh, Pastor, you understand. Let me not say that. Some of you are pushing people away just with the way you look. Just, just your countenance, just the way you look, make people, oh God. <laughs> just the way you look, just the way your countenance, there, there's no smile, there's no warmth, there's no friendliness, there, there, there's no excitement, there's no enthusiasm, there's absolutely nothing. You want everybody to feel sorry for you. The world doesn't owe you nothing. I don't owe you nothing. Yes. Your mother, your father doesn't owe you nothing. Yes. Some of you, the reasons why you can't get husbands is the way you look. Yes. Truth. And some of you men, the, way, the reason why you can't get good wives is the way you look. Yes. All sloppy and stinking and unclean and unneat and you negative and everything that comes out of your mouth is negativity, negativity. You don't have a job. You don't have a vision. You don't have something that you work and march towards to. You think everybody owes you. Becomes a parasite. Living off of the blood of other people. You should be ashamed of yourself. The Bible says a man that does not work should not eat. And sister, you that work for your husband, don't think you're doing the world a favor because you're not. Yes. 